Hello everyone and thanks for joining us for Sunday's edition of Alaska Weather. I'm Dave Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service and I'll be hosting today's show. Up first on the hazardous weather graphic, we've got uh, winter weather advisories out here for St. Lawrence Island and the uh, Bering Strait Coast. That's uh, until 6 a.m. Monday morning and that's for uh, snow, blowing snow, reducing visibility is less than a half mile at times, winds gusting 60 miles per hour as well. And then here in the lower Yukon Valley, there's a winter weather advisory out uh, for snow, anywhere from uh, three to six inches. That's out for tomorrow and tomorrow night as that uh, front slowly pushes inland. Once the snow starts, it should fall for a while. And it's expecting some significant snowfall amounts there. And then there's a winter storm watch out for the Seward Peninsula and uh, even heavier snowfall amounts of up uh, 8 to 12 inches expected there uh, for tomorrow and tomorrow night and actually into Tuesday with uh, winds gusting to 40, 50 miles an hour. Of course, that'll create blowing snow conditions and that could result in whiteout conditions there uh, with that uh, heavier snow and the gusty winds. And then winter weather advisory here uh, Kotzebue, Selawick Valley, up along the northwest coast. That's out for tomorrow, or actually comes out late tonight and continues through tomorrow into tomorrow evening up there for the same kind of conditions. Uh, snow, blowing snow, visibility is down to less than a half mile at times. Winds gusting 30 to 50 miles an hour. Moving on, satellite imagery. Here's that uh, front, uh, pretty wide band of moisture, or at least cloudiness, mostly just high stuff in through here, actually all the way out to the coastline. Uh, snow just beginning, St. Lawrence Island, or St. Lawrence Island back to Nunavak Island here. So uh, that's where the main pre uh, precipitation producing part of the cloudiness is, and that extends back down towards uh, False Pass and uh, St. Paul and the Eastern Aleutians gusty winds today over the Permaloffs gusting in some cases high 60 miles per hour. Uh, break behind the, the front with sunshine. Adak and Atka this afternoon, snow showers in towards Shimia. And over the interior, we had this uh, band of clouds associated with a upper level trough slowly moving eastward. That brought some areas of light snow from Cook Inlet north northeast into the uh, eastern or upper Tanaw Valley 40 mile country. And that's uh, no more than about an inch. Uh, some areas did pick up an inch, but uh, much light, generally snowfall amounts were lighter than that and really nothing too significant. We had a few showers develop here along the North Gulf Coast. Some of that did slip into Prince William Sound, mostly from this system coming in from the west, but again, pretty scattered and light in nature and clouds developing right on the north coast of the Panhandle. Mostly stayed, or did stay off the coast there. Got very close, but didn't quite make it on shore. So sunshine across all of the Panhandle this afternoon and breaking out Kodiak Island ahead of that front and rolling this through again. Pretty good winds. You can see this uh, low center taking off up toward the Russian Far East again. So the eastward progression of this storm, just like all the ones here of a recent couple of weeks, is going to slow down as it gets in toward the coastline. And a couple of waves are going to develop and move northward on it, which also act to slow things down. On the chart today, here's that trough coming eastward slowly through the interior, kind of breaking through the ridge a little bit with some upper support. Very light snowfall amounts with that and cloudy skies, and that's about it. Scattered isolated showers developing in the Gulf of Alaska. Actually due to this upper trough, it's actually gonna start dropping into the Gulf and come down off the panhandle tomorrow. And that should keep all the shower activity off the coast. Had a few flurries going on, or actually light snow throughout the day over at Kaktovik and Barter Island and back to the uh, southwest a little bit over the eastern north slope. Dry on the west side, high pressure rebuilding here over the northwest interior behind this trough and ahead of this front here. And the snow blowing snow getting gusts uh, along the southwest coast now have picked up to about uh, 35 to 45 miles an hour in gusts. St. Lawrence Island gamble seeing gusts to 55 miles an hour with uh, snow and blowing snow and wet snow over the Pribla of St. George Island gusts 60 miles an hour from the south and uh, 36 degrees but still reporting snow there and then you get down to the eastern Aleutians and that falling as rain with uh, Nikolsky prefrontal wind gusts there of 62 miles an hour and some shower activity mostly on the south side of the Alaska Peninsula quite light wind starting to come up there gusts 40 miles an hour cold bay and over at Falls Pass and uh, it will continue to as that front moves eastward otherwise uh, 
for tonight, forecast for tonight. No change here for the southeast coast. Some of these clouds may make their way onshore, but uh, no precipitation generally not looking at much of a change in the weather pattern there. Generally cloudy over interior Alaska from the uh, Prince William Sound area up to the north. That trough, uh, whatever's left of it, kind of drops into the Gulf here for some showers that'll stay off the coast. And pretty light winds also over the interior, high pressure up over the northeast, and those flurries tapering off on the eastern Arctic coast there. This front uh, pressing in toward the coast, so the winter weather advisories actually should begin to improve here for St. Lawrence Island, but not the Bering Strait coast. Uh, snow and blowing snow, winds gusting 40 to 50 miles an hour there, cutting up across the Seward Peninsula and that uh, gradually pushing eastward. Mixture precipitation, Togiak Bay back along the Kuskokwim uh, Delta coast to Nunavak Island. And then it looks like just rain here for the Alaska Peninsula uh, with the southerly winds. Next uh, system developing on this front coming northward to about this position uh, near the eastern Aleutians late tonight. And lots of snow showers back out to the west and generally west-southwest winds diminishing winds out there as that low center pulls up into Russia and weakens. And for tomorrow, you can see the uh, front really having trouble pushing eastward now due to this uh, wave developing and pulling up very close to the Pervilof Islands. That's going to keep the strongest winds to the east in toward Bristol Bay, probably gale force winds with that from the Alaska Peninsula up across western Bristol Bay. And pretty breezy, but not all that strong here for the uh, Kuskokwim Delta, mixture of rain or snow and then snow and blowing snow from the Yukon Delta up across, uh, as I mentioned, could get a good shot of snow, possibly for the uh, Seward Peninsula, with snow and blowing snow all the way up to the northwest coast. However, eastern, central eastern interior, high pressure aloft, rebuilding ahead of this system. So another mostly sunny day coming up with light winds, dry conditions, Arctic coast all the way down into Prince William Sound. And again, the shower activity staying off the coast. Look for sunshine for the Panhandle with light winds and dry conditions. Just a chance of a little moisture working in toward Kodiak Island tomorrow afternoon due to the south to north flow there. But the heavier precipitation will be back to the west along and south of the Alaska Peninsula. And then the forecast for Tuesday, slow movement eastward here, very slow. So that should uh, lay down, again, significant amount of snow for the lower Yukon Valley and then up across Seward Peninsula area there with uh, another wave actually forming south of Kodiak Island. The original one kicks off up towards uh, the Bering Strait. And so we're looking at snow pushing in toward the central interior, light snow, and uh, maybe some mixed precipitation getting into southern Cook Inlet. Looks like uh, the heavy, any best chance will be on the southern coast of the Kenai Peninsula on back to Kodiak Island. That'd probably be in the form of rain there with increasing clouds, but another sunny day for the far eastern interior as well as the southeast coast. Uh, a couple of sunny days with light winds coming up there. And then behind high pressure building in behind this uh, front, a couple of troughs dropping southeastward with snow showers, colder temperatures and Perbilofs back into the uh, southwest coast. And it looks like this will finally push eastward as the next storm drives into the uh, western and southwest Bering Sea. High pressure will finally nudge us eastward Tuesday night and slowly through Wednesday. And uh, so that will probably be the start of a change where we'll get a few more systems coming in from the southwest with more frequency and not just stalling out along the coast. For lows tonight, anywhere from 5 to 15 below here over the eastern interior. Cold is in the upper Yukon Valley and uh, right around zero for the Arctic coast. Otherwise, lower 30s and mild southerly flow here along the southwest coast. Teens to mid-20s for the Panhandle. Highs for tomorrow, 30s to near 40 for the southeast coast and lots of sunshine. Lower or mid-20s for the uh, Copper River Basin, lower 30s here, South Central Alaska, lower 40s Kodiak, mid 40s Bristol Bay, and single numbers and teens up to the northeast and along the Arctic coast with uh, actually mid-20s on the west side of the coast, 30s into the Seward Peninsula, and mid-30s down to the Pribilofs, upper 30s for the Aleutians. Lows the following morning, staying above freezing here, Bristol Bay and the Alaska Peninsula. And uh, 30, 35 for the lows for the Yukon Kuskokwim Delta, upper 20 Seward Peninsula, St. Lawrence Island, and back below 0, 5 to 15 below over the eastern interior, right up to the uh, eastern Brooks Range area, teens to mid 20s for the Panhandle. And your highs for Tuesday afternoon, uh, shaping up like this, uh, 35 to 40 once again for the southeast coast, and lower to mid 20s Copper River Basin, teens eastern interior, 
and teens to single numbers up to the uh, Eastern Brooks Range, mid-20s Central Arctic Coast, and 30 to 35 for the Seward Peninsula, near 40 for the southwest uh, part of the state, and lower 40s Bristol Bay and the Alaska Peninsula, South Central Alaska, upper 20s to lower to mid 30s here, with uh, milder temperatures down toward Homer, mid 30s there, lower 40s for Kodiak. Otherwise, uh, the Aleutians, not too bad, highs right around 40. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. IFR out along the uh, west coast here from the Bering Strait on down to Togiak Bay back to the Perbolofs and some more for the eastern Aleutians south side of the Alaska Peninsula. IFR here central interior over to the border. Marginal VFR in areas here right down to the Gulf of Alaska and tomorrow afternoon that uh, clears out with uh, ridging coming in ahead of this system that's uh, out along the coast there. So IFR from the northwest coast through the Bering Strait on down to just east of the Pribilofs now pushing inland to the southwest interior and marginal for Bristol Bay. Some VFR out over the central Aleutians and pretty good VFR here from the Gulf of Alaska, Kenai Peninsula northward to the eastern Beaufort Sea coast and stays VFR across the Panhandle. And that continues into Tuesday morning as well up into the southeast interior but Marginal VFR back in most areas here from the Gulf on up across the eastern interior to the Brooks Range and IFR uh, making a little bit of a head, some headway eastward here, uh, maybe into the Cuscombe Valley and uh, northern Bristol Bay back out uh, to the northwest of the Bering Strait. VFR here, Central Bering Sea and Aleutians. And then for Tuesday afternoon, it's still getting hung up here, these systems still hanging up here. So Again, VFR in the east, IFR as you head west, especially along the coast here, right into Bristol Bay, southwest Kodiak Island, back to VFR, eastern Aleutians, and uh, maybe the Pribilofs up into the central Bering Sea, and then some more IFR just edging its way in towards Chimianat too. And another VFR afternoon here for the southeast coast, up to Yakutat and the eastern interior. Anatovic tomorrow, VFR, and Adigan as well, looking good. Lake Clark and Merrill, uh, Basically, VFR could see some marginal VFR uh, hanging on the western entrances, uh, especially in the morning, otherwise the afternoon looking pretty good. Rainy VFR, windy as well. VFR, Isabel, VFR, Mentesta, could be a little more marginal over that way. And then for Tanita, good VFR for that pass. Portage, VFR flying tomorrow, either approach and Chilkoot and White, VFR. Freezing levels. At the surface here, again, hugging the North Gulf Coast on down the outer coastline tomorrow morning. And uh, up into the southwest here into the uh, Cuscombe Delta a little bit, just north of St. Matthew Island, plunging southward there out over the far western Aleutians. 2,000 feet here up across the Alaska Peninsula. And I seeing a uh, swath here with that southerly flow and moisture and the fronts hanging up here along the coast. Could be some considerable moderate here, terrain enhanced uh, along the Alaska Peninsula, also over the uh, Southwest Mountains. Otherwise, you head north here, it really starts to go to pieces as you cross the Seward Peninsula. Just a slight threat of some light rime icing up to the north. And taking a look at the jet stream, system sliding southeastward here into the eastern gulf tomorrow. So we got ridging coming in behind that head of this uh, next system trying to press in toward the coastline. So looking pretty good, eastern central interior tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon with the storminess along the coast and over the eastern bearing. And 9,000 feet south to north flow, pretty strong here, anywhere from 50 knots across the peninsula into the southwest interior, 25 to uh, 40 knots up here to the north and northwest to the Arctic coast. And then lighter winds over the eastern interior under high pressure. Same thing for the panhandle, very light variable winds there. Westerlies over the Aleutians, 15 to uh, 25, or I'm sorry, 25 to 35 knots here coming west, and then taking a turn to the north lighter here over the eastern northern Bering Sea from uh, St. Lawrence Island, this down to 20 knots, 15 to 20 for the Perbolofs, and looking at 3,000 feet. Pattern something like this, uh, low pressure there near the Perbolof Islands, that kind of putting the squeeze here on the atmosphere at the high in the Gulf, and so we've got southerlies, 35 to 40 knots there across Bristol Bay and the Alaska Peninsula, 
and 25 to 30 farther to the north, and uh, 25 to 35 across the Brooks Range out to the central Arctic coast. Lighter here over the eastern interior, 5 to 15, variable, and uh, not too bad for the panhandle as well, pretty light out of the northwest, 5 to 10. And turbulence-wise, uh, smooth for the Panhandle, Gulf of Alaska, Eastern Interior, and then uh, maybe the Brooks Range, Central Brooks Range could be a little moderate on the chop there, but definitely here in the west with the strong southerly winds, looking at considerable moderate turbulence from the Brooks Range right on down to the Alaska Peninsula here, as well as the southwest coast, but improving, getting pretty smooth tomorrow afternoon for St. Lawrence Island, and then those westerly winds keeps it uh, a little turbulent, but not too bad. Uh, Isolate a moderate chop from Shimia all the way to the Fox Islands. Hello again, I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with the National Weather Service with another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. And joining me today are not just one, but two people, both with the last name Stevens, which is even more fun, but no relation. We have Eric Stevens from Gina mm -hmm. and George Stevens, who is a mechanical engineering student from the University of Alaska mm -hmm. Fairbanks. Did I get that right? Yep. Awesome. And today you guys brought a really cool toy, or I should say tool, with you. It's a sandbox, but why are you guys working on a sandbox? Well, it's part of our senior design project, and we were approached by um, EPSCOR to build, build this from, for them. Mm -hmm. They uh, uh, had a proof of concept that they developed years, years, about a year ago, I think, and um, the, uh, uh, they, they wanted a more robust ver version that they mm -hmm. could pack onto a plane and take places. And it's a handy learning tool for kids and, all, and adults. So you're a mechanical engineering student. You've built a traveling sandbox for the experimental program to stimulate competitive research, EPSCOR, and Gina's facilitated this. But why do we need a traveling sandbox? Well, the, the uh, prototype was such a big hit that uh, they decided they wanted another one, actually two, that, they could act that would be easier to travel with, you know, um, possibly marketable even. Okay, so this is a traveling sandbox. It's got a lot of bits and pieces and, and a computer hooked up to it. What is the computer doing with the sand? The computer actually uses a Kinect sensor to read the topography of the sand or the shape of the sand, mm -hmm. which, and then the computer translates that into information which it projects using a projector onto the sand showing topographical lines and which is representative of the shape of the sand. Okay, so this is a live mapping tool? Yeah. It's interactive. As you're moving your hands through it, it is actively following and changing the lines to fit what you're doing. That sounds like something I could have in my backyard. Yeah. It'd be a lot of fun. <laughs> so you guys had to change the design a little bit to make this more Alaskified, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, how'd you do that? Well, um, the original was made out of basically lumber and Simpson strong tie type mm -hmm. stuff, and we re rebuilt it to make it lighter and basic and basically more transportable we can pack it down to a fairly small size and it can be loaded onto a plane and flown anywhere in the state which you guys did today and yeah. you have plans to take this in other places of alaska right yep we're actually going to be headed down to homer with it later today okay very good eric how mm -hmm. does this fit into uh science learning around alaska well you know what i think it is a tool and it is a toy and yes. it brings out a smile from an eight-year-old oh, yeah. and the smile from a 48-year-old oh, with yeah. that inner eight-year-old yes. wanting to get out. The, uh, the sandbox, it's an interactive learning tool that teaches us how topography in the three dimensions is related to, say, a two-dimensional map. More about that later. Just like George was saying, it's got a connect sensor, not just for video games anymore. It can sense out the, the lay of the land there, yeah. feeds that information in the computer. computer identifies that, sends a signal to a, pro a projector to send topographic land lines to map over that that uh, lumpy ground so right. you get a three-dimensional topo map out of it and my favorite thing about it this is the thing that stops people at the the trade show they stop at your booth and, and sure. don't leave is that you run your hand through that sandbox and it responds in in real time it remaps yeah, cool. the, top, the topography as you get to be Mr. Tectonic Plate Drifter <laughs> there. You can make things how you want. Well, what if we made a really high mountain here and a low valley there, and the lines adjust to what you did? It's a learning tool because it, yeah. it shows you that connection between these two-dimensional topo lines and, and what's really out in Alaska. And Alaska's a place with all kinds of topography. Mm -hmm. You know, we're from the Great Plains. 
where your topo maps tend to be just like blank pieces of paper. But Alaska is particularly gifted in this regard, and, and this tool helps us, I think, learn more about our state, really. Absolutely. And so this is going to enha enhance uh, STEM learning, the science, technology, engineering, and math in, in many different uh, locations around Alaska. Then this would be something that kids and teachers can get their hands on. Mm -hmm. It sure is. And I mentioned the, uh, it's, it's like flypaper at a booth <laughs> that, or, or at the uh, science potpourri. When we had Greg's original version of this sandbox, okay. and that one was made out of scraps of wood, and it, it was a prototype. But even that one, before it had some of the refinements that, that George and crew have made for this newer, right. um, upscaled, maybe a 2.0 version of the sandbox, okay. even that one was so attractive to people. It just demonstrated that this, this has potential to be a learning tool, an outreach tool, an education tool um, that can now is portable and can go places in Alaska um, of course, there's only one sandbox, can't be everywhere at once, but hopefully it gets out there, gets the word out about EPSCOR and, and what science is being done here for Alaskans. All right, that sounds really interesting, and I can't wait to get my hands in the sand and try this out for myself. Mm -hmm. We're going to demonstrate this here in our next segment of Alaska Weather Facts, but before we go, we want to remind you that EPSCOR, which is a, a new acronym for me now, but I'm going to remember this because you can follow them on Facebook and Twitter, and I invite you to do that. Alaska EPSCOR uh, is also uh, something that facilitates science learning at uh, the University of Alaska around the state, and that stands for Experimental Program to Stimulate Competitive Research. So check that out, and make sure you tune in tomorrow because we're going to have the next version where we actually get our hands in the sand and check out how this works and demonstrates that topography. So for now, I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder with this edition of Alaska Weather Facts and we'll see you again next time. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Today's sea ice analysis still very little here along the southwest coast, and the uh, southerly winds here uh, with this front, uh, really not much different we had yesterday because there weren't any good pictures to see. It was probably something less than this. And it looks like after this uh, front goes through today, the wind is currently coming through and bringing the strong winds in. Like late tomorrow, it'll end, and the winds will become lighter and a little more variable, possibly coming easterly later in the week. So that uh, probably will halt the northward progression here somewhat. Anyway, for coastal water forecasts here for the Panhandle, east winds 10 knots, except on the south coast, north at 15, with seas at 5 feet. Northwest at 10 for uh, Clarence Strait. North 20, Stevens Passage. And north 25 for Lynn Canal. Those continue, not much change there. Small craft advisors for Lynn Canal. Otherwise, central southern inside waters, northerlies 10 to 15. 10 to 15 out along the coast from the north on the south coast. North coast, uh, east-northeast light at 10 knots with seas 4 to 5 feet. And for Prince William Sound, north winds at 10 knots, seas 2 feet. About the same here in the north Gulf Coast, uh, variable to north at 10, seas 2 feet, and that's it. Uh, south 15 for the Barren Islands and east 25 knots for Kamishak Bay here. Otherwise, northeast at 20 for Southern Cook Inlet, northeast 10 north of the Forelands. And for Cook Inlet on Tuesday north 15 knots, southeast 25 for Kamishak Bay, southeast at 20 for the Barrens, and southeast 15 for the western north Gulf Coast. And the east side here, kind of variable to northeast at 10, still light in the seas, uh, two feet. Prince William Sound, variable to southeast at 10 knots of two foot seas. Kodiak Island, east side here, south 15, Shilakoff Strait, southeast 20 tomorrow. And then uh, 30 knot winds here, Sitkanak to Castle Cape out of the southeast, right up into Bristol Bay for small craft advisories, and south to southeast, 25 to 30 knots for the Alaska Peninsula. And for Tuesday, westerlies, 25 knots for the peninsula, southwest 25 for Bristol Bay, and from Castle Cape to Sitkanak, strongest winds will be in this area at 30 knots, southeast 25, east side of Kodiak. Out in the Aleutians, western Aleutians, southwest, 30 knots tomorrow, sees around 15 feet. And uh, just 20 to 25 knots for the Adak Atka area tomorrow out of the southwest. And uh, west to south or west southwest, southerly south from Alaska Island, west southwest for Unmak Island, all in the 20 to 25 knot range. And then for Tuesday, westerlies, 25 to 30 knots there for the eastern Aleutians, southwest 25, Adak and Atka. Next storm bringing gale force winds into the western Aleutians up to 40 knots west of Kiska. 
And for the southwest coast, south of Nunavak Island, small craft advisories, southeast 25 knots, south 25 knots for St. Lawrence Island, southeast 25 Norton Sound, light winds for the Pervilofs, and southeast 10 for St. Matthew Island. They'll swing around to the west-northwest here for St. Matthew Island and St. Paul, St. George, uh, 25 knots, southwest 25 into Cusquam Bay, north of Nunavak Island, southerlies at 25 knots, fall back to about 20 knots for St. Lawrence Island. Eastern Boulevard Sea Coast, southeast 15, central coast south 20, and then brisk wind advisories here for the western coast all the way down to Wales with uh, south to southeast release at 30 knots for the Chuck CC. And then those uh, reduce a little bit there. We still got brisk wind advisories from Wales to Cape Thompson. Otherwise, here the east side, easterly is 10 to 15, southeast 15 on the central coast, and light southeast breeze there on the east side. For tonight, again, uh, High pressure continues to dominate the interior. Dry conditions, uh, a lot of clouds around though. Leftover moisture from uh, the system that brought the light snow eastward today. And some of that drops into the Gulf here. The main upper disturbance does. This presses in toward the coast. Snow blowing snow, winter storm warning out for the Seward Peninsula for uh, eight to 12 inches of snow through Tuesday for a total accumulation. Uh, winter Weather Advisory, St. Lawrence Island, Bering Strait Coast tonight until the front goes through. Gusts uh, 50, 60 miles an hour. Visibility is down to less than a half mile at times. And snow pushing into the Yukon Delta. Mixture precipitation is just rain over the Alaska Peninsula. And for tomorrow, no change for the Panhandle. Another sunny day, central eastern interior with light winds. This uh, trying to push eastward here, a wave traveling northward. Uh, bring some gusty winds into the uh, western Bristol Bay, Alaska Peninsula area tomorrow. Snow and blowing snow up the west coast. And then that uh, makes a little bit more of a jog eastward, but not much. More so down here to the south of this wave coming up. And there's the next storm coming into the far western Aleutians. High pressure in between. And eventually this will shift eastward uh, Tuesday night. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating.